We reach the 16th line where he says وَمُرْسَلٌ مِّنْهُ الصَّحَابِيٌّ سَقَطْ وَقُلْ غَرِيبُ مَا رَوَى رَوِنْ فَقَطْ The doctor, uh, Sheikh Abdi Sattar, Abu Ghudda, he corrects him here and he says وَمُرْسَلٌ مِّنْ فَوْقِ تَابِعِينَ سَقَطْ وَقُلْ غَرِيبُ مَا رَوَى رَوِنْ فَقَطْ Basically, Imam Al-Bayquni, rahimahullah, he's saying وَمُرْسَلْ the hadith which is mursal is, if you hear a hadith is mursal, it means, uh, according to him, is وَمُرْسَلٌ مِّنْهُ الصَّحَابِيٌّ سَقَطْ It's when a companion is disconnected. So a tabi'i says that the Prophet said. So what's missing is a companion. وَقُلْ غَرِيبُ مَا رَوَى رَوِنْ فَقَطْ And a hadith which is غريب, hadith which is strange, is a hadith only one person narrated it. So in that one line, he told us two uh, things in science of hadith. The first one is mursal and the second one is gharib. But here Imam al-Bayquni rahimahullah is incorrect. Because what he says is that is a sahabi is missing. And that isn't the case. Because if a sahabi was the thing that was missing from the chain, then we would have accepted it. We would have accepted it because all the sahabas are reliable. But the issue is that a tabi'i says that the Prophet said, and the reason why we don't accept it is because there's a possibility he, he, might, be, he might be narrating this, or the person who he dropped could have been another tabi'i. And not all the tabi'i were taking their narration. Whereas the sahabas, all their narrations are taken. So that's why we need to know who's missing from the chain of narration uh, in this situation. So a hadith which is mursal is, a hadith which a tabi'i attributes to the Prophet. Basically, that's what it is. Whether it's a speech, whether it's an action, whether it's a consent, whatever he ascribes to the Prophet from those three, a tabi'i is called a mursal. It is called mursal. And an example for that is ما رواه أبو داود في المراسيل أبو داود, السجستاني رحمه الله, the author of the Sunan, he has a book called Al-Marasil. He has a book called al Barasid, where he brought a, a narrations which were our mursal. And he brought the hadith of the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which Abi Muhammad ibn Shihab al-Zuhri, ibn Shihab al-Zuhri, ascribed a hadith to the Prophet, in which he said, and the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ista'ana binasi min al-Yahudi fi khaybara, fi harbihi fa asham lahum. That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used a group of Jews in the Battle of Khaybar. So this statement is Zuhri to the Prophet. It's called Mursal. Zuhri is an Imam in Aimmat al muttaqin He's a righteous uh, Imam, uh, and he's an Imam from the time of the Tabi'in. Meaning he never, he never saw the Prophet, he only saw the Sahabas. He only saw a Sahabi. Now, who is missing from this chain of narration? The Wasita. The person between this uh, Ibn Shihab al-Zuhri and the Prophet, it could be a Sahabi or it could be another Tabi'i in which he narrated from. If we were 100% sure that who he dropped off is a companion, then that narration is accepted. But we don't. And we can't say 100% because there's a possibility that is a Tabi'i he dropped. So we need to know who this Tabi'i is. What's his name? Um, how is his memory like? And etc. Then the author goes into وَقُلْ say غَرِيبٌ مَا رَوَى رَوِينَ فَقَطْ غَرِيب is a hadith which is strange. Why is it called غَرِيب? The reason it's called غَرِيب is because one individual narrated it. And it makes it strange. Just like a person who is alone comes to a, a place where he doesn't normally reside or it's not his country or his town. He's looked at as a strange, strange individual. And that's the same. That is why it's called Gharib. Um, uh, an example for that is the hadith narrated by Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. Where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَّاتِ وَإِنَّمَا لِكُلِّ مْرِئٍ مَا نَوَى That hadith, the only person who narrated it from the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and conveyed it to us is Umar. And the only person who 
uh, narrated it from Umar is Al Qamat ibn Abi Waqas al Layfi. The only person who, narr- who conveyed it uh, from Al Qama is Muhammad ibn Ibrahim al Taymi. And the only person who narrated from Muhammad ibn Ibrahim al Taymi is Yahya ibn Sa'id al Ansari. And after Yahya ibn Sa'id al Ansari, the hadith it got narrated by a large amount of individuals. So, but before that, it was what? It was gharib. It was gharib, meaning only one person narrated it. So, when a hadith, only one person narrates it, in any place of a hadith, it's called what? It's called gharib. Good. وَكُلُّ مَا لَمْ يَتَّصِلْ بِحَالِ إِسْنَادُهُ مُنْقَاطِعُ الْأَوْصَالِ and every type of hadith that is not connected, every hadith that is not connected, then this hadith is considered a weak, it's called a disconnected narration. Isnaduhu munqatu al Pay attention. If a hadith is disconnected and it is not connected, what do you call it? You call it munqatu. You call that munqatu. Munqatu means a hadith which is not connected, it's a chain. It's the chain is not connected uh, by an individual or more are missing from the chain. Um, <coughs> this is called what? It's called munqata. It is called munqata. So any place where any person drops is called what? It's called munqata. Very good. An example for that would be um, Imam uh, Abu Dawood, what he narrated in his Sunan, he said, Haddathana Sulaiman ibn Dawood al-Mahri. Qala akhbarana ibn Wahbin an Yunus ibn Yazid an ibn Shihab anna Umar ibn al-Khattab qal wa huwa ala al-manbar ya ayyuha al-nas inna al-ra'ya inna ma kana min Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam usiba li anna Allah kana yurihi wa inna ma huwa minna al-dhan wa al-takalluf. Uh, this hadith, Imam al-Bukhari, he narrated it from his teacher, Sulaiman ibn Dawood al-Mahri, who then said, I, he narr- who then narrates it from Ibn Wahb, who then narrates from uh, Yunus ibn Yazid, who then narrates from Ibn Shihab al-Zuhri. And then Ibn, Sha- ibn Shihab al-Zuhri, he ascribes this hadith to Umar ibn al-Khattab. Now the chain is disconnected. This hadith is munqata. As Imam al-Mundiri, he mentions in his Mukhtasar sunan Abi Dawood, he says this chain is disconnected. Why is it disconnected? Because Muhammad ibn Shihab al Zuhri lam, yad, lam yudrik Umar ibn al Khattab. Muhammad ibn Shihab al Zuhri never met Umar ibn al Khattab. Muhammad ibn Shihab al Zuhri he did not meet Umar ibn al Khattab. So this is called what? Munqata. Disconnected. Ha. This is called what? Disconnected. So this chain is not connected and it, so it becomes weak. والمعضل الساقط منه اثنان وما أتى مدلس النوعان The author here, he moves on to something known as معضل. معضل is a different type of disconnection. It's another, it's a different type of disconnection. It means when two disconnections, two individuals are missing, but these two individuals are next to one another. Okay? It is مَا سَقَطَ مِنْ إِسْنَادِهِ It is what, anything that is disconnected from the chain of narration or more, but they are connected to one another. This is called what? مَعَ التَّوَالِي This is a condition. In any place of the hadith, it doesn't matter. It is called what? It is called a munq. It's called مُعْضَل. It's called a مُعْضَل. An example would be for that, even that though this part um, a hadith which is mu'dal, um, sorry, the example for a hadith which is mu'dal is as follows. Um, that which Imam al Hakim narrated in his book Ma'arifat Ulum al Hadith, Imam al Hakim al Naysaburiyu, where he said um, he narrates it from himself to Abdullah ibn Maslamat al Qa'anabi. Abdullah ibn Maslamat al Qa'anabi. Abdullah ibn Maslamat al Qa'anabi is the student of Imam uh, Malik ibn Anas. Abdullah ibn Maslamat al-Qa'anabi is the student of Imam Malik. So he says, An Malik ibn Anas. 
So Abdullah ibn Maslamat al-Qa'nabi says from Imam Malik. Okay? أنه بلغه أن أبا هريرة قال مالك بن أنس it reached him that Abu Huraira said قال رسول الله that the messenger said للملوك طعامه وكسوته بالمعروف ولا يكلف من العمل إلا ما يطيق the slave that is owned he has his food and he also has his clothing in good he should be he should be looked after in terms of his fooding food and in terms of his clothing Okay, and wala yukallafu, he is not burdened uh, from actions except that which he is able to do. Now this hadith, it's mu'dal. It falls under the type that we were talking about, which is mu'dal, two people are missing from it. Where does the i'dal occur from? I mean, where does it become mu'dal? A'talahu, Imam Malik did i'dal. Imam Malik did it. He took two people missing from the chain of narration. There are two people who are missing. Who are the two people that are missing? Muhammad ibn Ajlan and his father are both missing. Muhammad ibn Ajlan and his father are both miss missing from the chain of narration. So in this, so in this regard, um, the hadith is what? The hadith is, uh, is not accepted. Two people are missing unless we know who those two people are and we can research into them. Uh, so Imam Malik ta'ala in his muwatta he took those two people out and he didn't uh, mention it. Good. Um, by looking at other narrations, we find that those are the two people who are missing, Muhammad ibn Ajlan and his father. Well, Mu'dal is when two people have been dropped from the chain of narration and they have to be next to each other. So Muhammad ibn Ajlan and his father are both next to each other. But if there's a disconnection at the beginning and at the end, that's not called what? That isn't called Mu'dal. Mu'dal means that both together in the middle of them in the chain. Okay? Very good. وَمَا أَتَى مُدَلَّسًا نَوْعَانِ And now he's going to move on to what is known as mudallas. And I said to you last time, uh, when we spoke about uh, an'ana, we, we spoke about something called mudallas. What is a mudallas? A mudallas, it is an individual who would drop a person out of the narration deliberately, but won't lie. He won't lie. He would choose to drop somebody out. Uh, so the hadith can seem very smooth to him and the Messenger Sallallahu or he can shorten it. I mean, it meant a lot to uh, the narrators to seem closer to the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasallam. So some of them would drop somebody out. They would drop one or two people out. And there were many factors why they would do that. One, as I said, is they would do it so they can get closer to the Prophet, or they would do it because the individual they're narrating it from is a weak individual. But when they drop this person out, they're not going to lie and say, I heard it from the person who they're, they're ascribing it to. They will say, from that person. So, it has come from that person or not, but they won't say, I heard it from you. For example, uh, I gave this example, example before. They would say, Muhammad, so here I have my hand, Muhammad, and I have Ahmed. So, I heard this hadith from Muhammad, who then heard it from Ahmed. Now, I don't want to narrate it from Ahmed, because Ahmed's weak. Sorry, Muhammad here, sorry. Muhammad here and Ahmed here. So Muhammad here is weak. I don't want to ascribe it to him. I want to jump to Ahmed. So if I say, I heard Ahmed, I'd be lying. So I don't want to lie. But I still want to drop Muhammad. So I would say, An. An doesn't mean I heard it. It just means from Ahmed. So I hope that makes it clear. I am then called a mudallis. A mudallis is that person who does that action of dropping somebody else. So the author says, وَمَا أَتْهَا That which comes as a mudallas is no ani, it's two types. Huh? It's two types. He's going to tell you what two types are. They are. Al uh, number ni line 19, he tells you it. Al awwalu al isqatu li shaykhi wa an yanqula amman fawqahu bi an wa an wa thani la yusqituhu lakin yasif awsafahu lakin yasif awsafahu bima bihi la yan arif. Good. Um, Al-Imam Bayquni tells us the two types now here. The Tadlis happens in two ways, he mentions them. One is, Al-Awwalu um, Al-Isqatu um, Lil-Shaykhi. The first one is, he will drop a person out. And that's the, that's the type I told you. Al-Awwalu, the first one, Al-Isqatu Lil-Shaykhi. It is for him to drop 
his teacher or the person who he narrated it from. He will drop him out. And then he, the person who above him, so it was Muhammad and Ahmed. So Muhammad was my teacher, right? I dropped Muhammad and I, I jumped to who? Ahmed. So I, then what does he do? Then what does he do? يَنْقُولُ عَمَّنْ فَوْقَهُ بِعَنْ وَأَنْ So Muhammad, Ahmed, I drop Muhammad, I go to Ahmed, and the intention I go to Ahmed, I have to use the word an or an. That's what he does. That's the first type. وَالثَّانِ لَا يُسْقِطُهُ The second type is that he doesn't drop a person. لَكِنْ يصف. But he describes him, a person, in a, in a chain, with a description that he's not known for. But he is that, but he won't. So for example, the person isn't known for being, uh, he doesn't have the nickname, he gives him a nickname that he's not known for. Or it gives him a description that he's not known for. To fool the people not to know who this person is. He's not lying, the person has that description, but he's not known for it. For example, he will, uh, he would say, uh, Muhammad al-Tawil. So he was Ahmed, right? So he would say, Ahmed al-Tawil. Uh, sorry, Muhammad, sorry, is the person who, he won't drop Muhammad, sorry. So we have Muhammad, Ahmed, sorry. He won't drop Muhammad. He won't drop him. But he, he will hide with him. But I would do what? He's known, for example, as Muhammad uh, as saduq for example, he's known as. So he just takes another description of his and he says, no, Muhammad al-Tawil. Now people are, who's Muhammad al-Tawil? To confuse the people. وَثَانِ لَا يُسْقِطُهُ He doesn't drop him. لَكِنْ يصف. He describes him. It's not بِمَا بِمَا بِهِ لَا يَنْعَرِفْ That which no one can know him for. To make it harder for the people. Now the author, he only mentioned two types. He uh, mentioned uh, two types. So inshallah ta'ala, I'm going to mention uh, all the, the types that are out there when it comes to tadlis, uh, tadlis. The types of tadlis there are. So there are three types of tadlis in general. Uh, there are three types of a tadlis. At least we've taken it right, which is the, the person who's doing all of that. It happens in three different forms. The first one is called Tadlis, tadlis with Taswiya. Huh? It's called Tadlis with Taswiya. And I hope from the name you guys can realize what it means. Tadlis with Taswiya, Taswiya means it is um, a person who narrates from his, from his sheikh. You see? You see? Um, and then he will drop a weak a person between two reliable individuals. He will drop somebody out. I mean, he will get rid of, he will organize the chain of narration and get rid of the weak individual who's there. And some, somebody who was known to do that was Baqiyah, uh, Baqiyah ibn al-Walid. Baqiyah ibn al-Walid was very known to do that. Very good. The second type is called Tadlis al-Isnad. It's called what? Tadlisul Isnad. Tadlisul Isnad means <coughs> it is um, a person narrates from an individual. He narrates from a person who he normally has heard from. Somebody who he has heard from. That which he hasn't heard from him. So he has normally narrated from this person who's met this person, but uh, he narrates from him that which he hasn't heard from him. Okay, this time he hadn't heard this particular one from him. Without him directly saying that he heard from him. So it's the one that we, we mentioned, he uses the word an or an. So when I was saying Muhammad and Ahmed, I have actually met Muhammad. I've met him, but I wasn't there that day when Ahmed was giving the narration out. Muhammad was there. So I just want to get rid of him and I put him in place. Okay? The third type is called Tadlis al-Shuyukh. <coughs> and that's the type that وَالثَّانِ لَا يُسْقِطُّهُ لَكِنْ يَصِفْ أَوْصَافَهُ بِمَا بِهِ لَا يَنْعَرِفْ It is that he narrates from a shaykh a hadith in which he heard from him, but he will give him a name or a description or a, a title in which no one would know him for. A description that no one would, would know him for. Those are the types of tadlis. Those are the types of tadlis. وَمَا يُخَالِفْ ثِقَةٌ بِهِ الْمَلَا فَشَّاذُ وَالْمَقْلُوبُ قِسْمَانٍ تَلَا إِبْدَالُ رَاوِ مَا بِرَاوٍ قِسْمُ وَقَلْبُ إِسْنَادٍ لِمَتْنِ قِسْمُ The author, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, here, he moves on to the type known as um, shad. It's known as shad. 
And we've spoken about that before. Uh, the Sheikh is talking about Shad here. And he also talks about um, Maqloob, which we're going to be taking, inshaAllah ta'ala. وَمَا يُخَالِفْ ثِقَةٌ So the first, type, first line, or first shatr, he talks about Shad. Shad means, مَا يُخَالِفْ ثِقَةٌ بِهِ الْمَلَاءَ فِيهِ الْمَلَاءَ Shad means ha, a person who opposes, there's an opposition of, an, of a narrator. A narrator is opposing. His opposition is happening from one of two. Either he is opposing a person who has more memorization than he does. So he is what? مُخَالِفًا لِمَنْ هُوَ أَرْجَحُ مِنْهُ حِفْظًا In terms of memorization, this individual has better memorization than him. So he's opposing him. That's one. Or he's opposing a larger amount of individuals. Okay? He's opposing a larger amount of individuals. Uh -huh. That's uh, Shad. That's Shad. Okay? <clears throat> um, the second thing he mentions is وَالْمَقْلُوبُ قِسْمَانِ تَلَى and maqloob. What does maqloob mean? Maqloob is when something turns upside down. When something turns upside down. And because I can't put a, a direct definition of the word maqloob, unless I tell you the types of maqloob there are. So the Sheikh told you, wal maqloob qismani. The maqloob is two types. And from the two types, you'll realize what maqloob means. The first type is, ibdalu rawin ma bi rawin qismu. The first type is ibdalu rawin ma bi rawin qismu, which is um, ibdalu laftin akhara, when two wordings mix, they go back to front, they turn over. And the example for that is the hadith Abu Huraira narrated, the hadith Abu Huraira narrated, uh, where it's in Bukhari and it's Muslim and Imam Malik and Malik and it's there, Abu Huraira, that, and it's a sab'at 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 alladheena yudilluhum allahu uh, in that seven, Allah mentions that He's going to give them a shade when there is no shade. That hadith. Um, the Prophet mentioned in the hadith, وَرَجُلٌ تَصَدَّقَ بِصَدَقَةٍ فَأَخْفَى حَتَّى لَا تَعْلَمُ يَمِينُهُ حَتَّى لَا تَعْلَمُ شِمَالُهُ مَا تُنْفِقُ يَمِينُهُ The hadith, it hap it, what happened in it by, uh, by uh, iqlab, a uh, maqloob, is that in instead of it being a man who gave charity so much, that he hid it so much, that his left hand is unaware of his right, instead of it being like that, it became what? That his left hand, sorry, his right hand was unaware of what his left hand gave. And the person doesn't give his sadaqah with his left, he gives it with his right. So what took place here? It's called uh, the ibdal, the wordings changed back to front, okay? Back to front. So it's the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ where he said, a man who gives a sadaqah or a woman who gives a sadaqah and she hides or he hides it so much that his left hand is unaware of what his right hand gave. That's how it should have been. And that's how the Prophet said it. But then some of the narrations, iqlab, it became maqloob, which basically is that it said that his right hand is unaware of what his left hand gave. That's the first type. The second type is Ibn Isnad of a metan is given to another, a, a, a chain is given to a wording of a hadith different to the other one. Basically, they take the chain and it gets given to another hadith. So mixing up the chains with the hadith. So you, the hadith of the Prophet, the Prophet is saying is here, the chain of narration is here. They take that chain and they give it to another hadith and they take another chain and they place it on top of the hadith. This is called ibdal isnadi matnin bi isnadi matnin akhar. And that was what was done to Imam al Bukhari rahimahullah, when he came to Iraq, Baghdad. When he came to Baghdad, they wanted to test his memory. So what they did to him was ibdal. They mixed up the chain of narration for him to test his memorization. And Imam al Bukhari rahimahullah, he passed the test. He put every narration, rahimahullah, uh, in its correct place. And this story, what does it show? Tadullu ala si'ati hifd al-Bukhari. It shows how strong and tough Imam al-Bukhari's memorization was. Wa sayyalani dhihnihi. 
ودقة فهمه وثقوب نظره رحمة الله عليه رحمة واسعة May Allah have immense and vast mercy upon him So Imam al-Bukhari that's how his memorization was That's the two types of maqloob وَالْفَرْضُ مَا قَيَّتَّهُ بِثِقَةٍ أَوْ جَمْعٍ أَوْ قَصْرٍ عَلَى رِوَايَةِ The author rahimahullah ta'ala now he's going on to another type of uh, hadith which is known as fard Fard is a hadith which is what? A hadith which is uh, singular. A hadith which is one person narrated it. Um, it is also known as what? Gharib. And it's sometimes called fard. Fard means what? Um, it means singular. مَأْخُوذُ مِنَ التَّفَرُّدِ It's taken from the word tafarrud and it's two types. The first one is called fard mutlaq. It is the unrestricted singular narration and it's the narration where one reliable person narrates it and no one else did. The second type is called Fard Muqayyad. Fard, fard Muqayyad. Fard Muqayyad is the restricted type of singular narration. And it's of how many types? Two types. The Fard uh, Muqayyad, the restricted, the restricted type of singular narration is what? It is, um, it's two types. Either it is sing the first type is إذا تفرد به أهل بلد معين بأن لم يروي إلا أهل بلد كذا وكذا. It's when a narration is only narrated by a particular land, a particular people of a particular land have only narrated this hadith. Good. The second type is called what? If a singular individual made the narration, he is the only person who made it. And this took place in the middle of the chain of narration. It happens in the beginning of the chain of narration, in the middle of the chain of narration. Very good. So the unrestricted one is at the top. Uh, the mutlaq, which is the unrestricted, it, that it's one sahabi narrator from the Prophet. And then it becomes mutlaq from there. Uh, sorry, it becomes fard from there. Another one is that the chain of narration becomes fard from the middle. It becomes restricted and it becomes singular from the middle. It's called fard muqayyad. Uh, 